Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to Small Land. I'm actually picking up a little ahead of schedule. I was going to bring you all back when we were up in our base, or start the episode when we are up in our base, but I was between episodes getting metal, and I figured, you know, since we're down here, why don't we go and find where this dead body with the spear is. And it is right here. And we walked past it when we were coming through here before. And we're going to just see if we can find it. And take out these gray flies. And we'll bring it home. Take a look at it. And, oop, there's one more. Get back here. There you are. Oh, you're still alive somehow. So, yeah, right in here with these blue lanterns, apparently there is a body somewhere. Uh, here it is. With the stinger lance. There we go. Oh, we got the ability to make new ones now, too. Yeah, we were literally right here. We went and walked along this and did not see this. These lights should have been a big hint, but... Whoops, they weren't. Might be. Let's take a look at this guy. Stinger lance, 20 to 28 damage. Which is the same as the chitin spear, and it has poison. Okay, so this is... Basically a direct upgrade in that it deals more it deals poison damage at all. They're otherwise basically the same. So yeah. Pretty decent upgrade there. And boy is that fierce looking. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say at the beginning of this episode. Let's get excuse you. Let's get back up to our base and we're gonna start the episode where I think today. We're going to head down and we're going to deal with the merchant or find him and talk to him. We'll probably have to get some more pyrite and we'll see how far we get. I don't know how big of a quest he might have for us, if anything, or if we're just going to go and buy the books off him and take him back to the historian. But we'll find out later. And for now, I will see all of you probably back at base as we start looking at maybe some of the other things we can make. We might even bring along stuff to make armor at the historian. We'll see. Anyway, I'll see you all in a bit. Alright everyone, we are back. And uh, as you can see, I had to park our Hornet buddy <laughs> this far out in order to stop hearing the constant buzzing around the house. Because it gets a little old, not gonna lie. NGL. But I was thinking, so the ruins we were in down here all that verticality we were dealing with, dealing with, if I can use English words, not dealing with, all that verticality would be just completely gone with the hornet or the damselfly. So that is something to think about for when we are going back there. Like, so we don't have to sort of wind our way around the shelves and things. We can just get right up to our librarian dude and we'll have to deal with the gray flies. So I think the hornet is a better option than the damselfly, but yeah. Anyway, I came and got a whole bunch more iron. We were basically out. I think I had like three or five ingots left. And so I got some more just so that we can have stuff for repairing my scythe when I forget. But I was going through all of our options in the forge and I was looking at the codex and it seems like we're basically out of new recipes for the forge. So I was kind of hoping to get a new spear because we did just, yeah, I know, we just got this new one, the Stinger Lance, and it's great, but poison or damage over time in a game where combats last on the order of seconds doesn't really appeal to me. I would much rather have a high damage spear that I can just stab and deal, you know, 100 damage than one where I have to wait for the damage to set in. So we'll use this because it is the best spear in the game that I know of, but if we were to find another option, which I don't think we will, just based on there aren't any more question marks in tables or crafting tables that, you know, can make weapons, we do have a couple in the apothecary table and one in the cauldron. I'm going to guess this is... Oh, I know it is. There's, there's a mosquito enemy we haven't fought. And I want to say... Oops, wrong button. I want to say they're down kind of in this area where we haven't really gone yet. 
I haven't seen them in game, but I have read about them on the wiki and seen people discussing them. I think we have to get like the mosquito blood bags or something for the big Healy potions. But I was thinking, so Nock is the one who sent us on the King Stag Beetle quest. I'm wondering if we should go and talk to Nock again just to see if she has anything else for us. Okay, you don't have anything else for me. Yeah, let's go talk to Nock real quick, and if Nock doesn't have anything interesting for us, then we'll just head down here and I'll probably bring all of you back right as we're crossing here. I'll move our base again down here. I'll probably call our hornet. You know what? I might just fly our hornet down to knock. Hey, you know what? It's annoying. I, I like the hornet. I hate the sound. I want to be able to turn that sound off. Like, hornet quiet your wings mode. Let's go. So, oh, you know what? I forgot something. We... Oh, no, I didn't. We're gonna we're gonna be doing a moving of the base anyway. I was gonna bring with us the pyrite to go talk to the merchant, but we're not going to need it until we're actually on the way. Oh. Yep, see the snowflakes? It is getting toward winter, and our heat and cold bar is getting kind of low there. Yep. I brought with us some of these, the Fae Chowders, because they'll give us a whole bunch of cold protection for a while. So I figured that was a smart move to do since we're getting on toward winter here. Or, apparently it suddenly is winter. <laughs> Alright, so Nock is straight this way, basically. Let's go! What if we can get onto that uh, transformer there? Find out. We're gonna drop quickly. Come on. Transformer, you can do it. Oh yeah. Look at that. That was all skill, no luck. And let's get down here. Hey, Nock. How you doing? Hey, what can I do for you? Do you have any inventions that come my adventure? Well, well, well. A catapult. You can charge up to three times, and when you pull the release lever, the items you've placed in the launch pad will go flying through the air. I was going to talk to the miners so they could more easily transport their stone. That seems like a bad idea. Sadly, they declined the offer, citing its safety regulations on such nonsense. Sounds fun. <laughs> what about people? <laughs> if you death wish, even at its lowest setting, such a use will surely result in broken bones when you come back down. Well, I'm sure I'll find some use for it. Thank you. Well, well, well. I wonder if it's going to be worth it to go talk to most people, or even everyone. Let's go give Mermek uh, a shout and see if Mermek's got anything new for us. While we're on the topic of new things. Ugh, great flies. No one loves you. Bye. Bye, all of you. It's been fun. Okay, so Mermic is... Still hearing battle music. And now I'm hearing the sound of snowflakes hitting the ground. I like that we're so small that like the sound of snowflakes hitting the ground actually like registers. I mean I know you can hear it in real life if you listen real closely, but Granted, I'm gonna guess that because I have the game sounds sort of turned down in the recording, you all probably can't hear it too well. Mermec, do you have anything new and cool for us? Get our scythe out, because there are going to be some ants around here. 
Probably. Yeah, here he comes. Hey, buddy. Bye, buddy. Oh, you know what? Yeah, head. I'll take you. I'll take your lymph too for mortar. What have you got for us up here? Right, the go the entire way around the house to get in the house with the storm bridges, okay? Well, I'll hang out here. Hey, Marmac. Hey there. Okay, so you don't have anything cool for me. Alright, fine. Alright, well, I'm gonna ride out the storm here, and then I'll head down to the tree that's down... What was it here? We will move our base here, and then once we're here, we will head south and go talk to the merchant and see what he's got for us. And I'm going to make sure to bring all of our pirate with us because if you look in the codex, you will see down here at the merchant that he buys calling spider abdomens, which we have one of, and I'm not going to get more. And he buys pyrite, and we have like a couple hundred pyrite at this point, so we'll take that with us. I did, by the way, bring along our flint shears in case we do go back to this area, which I assume we will here soon, but I have them with me so that if we do, we can check out those cocoons and see if we can get some more of those admins from it, because killing the little annoying spiders with our scythe is great, but it really wears the scythe out, so try to avoid it. Anyway, I'll see all of you in a little while. Alright folks, we are back. It is definitely full-on winter now. And I've been kind of farting around the base. One thing I did do is I made a second chest here because this one was getting full of goodies, actually. I think the herptile hide was actually the, the culprit. But we had a few pieces of silk from those spiders, too. So I split them between sort of soft things and hard things. We have chitin in the one and sort of everything else in the other that's sort of a, a textile, basically. You know, fur and hide and silk and then the chitin, which is used for, like, plating and stuff. So that was my thought there. Why is it snowing in my house? Makes no sense. Anyway, we are... Oh, we are going to get our pyrite... Just to make sure I have it on camera, I did not forget my pyrite. There we go. And we're going to go and give this merchant a little chat. And I have indeed moved our base down here. And I have a bit of con a bit of a concern about the Hornet. As far as, like, game balance goes, but then again, maybe not. So, if anyone here says, if anyone here has gone the complete wrong direction... Oh, that's just me, never mind. If anyone here has played, say, Ark, Survival Evolved, and you have gotten the Argentavis, you might kind of know what I'm talking about. Where, once you get the Argentavis, like, your, your need to deal with things on the ground pretty much evaporates. You, you don't really have credible ground-based threats anymore as long as you're on the back of your Argentavis, which is a giant... Giant prehistoric bird, for those of you who aren't familiar. And I kind of feel like the Hornet's the same way. And that's because the Hornet actually is able to fly up. The Damselfly seemed like it could get off the ground, and as long as you were traveling along the ground, you could sort of gain altitude to a certain point and then coast back down. But the Hornet actually has the ability to gain altitude and keep it. It's sort of a little bit at a time, but... There you have it. And I was actually able to ascend to that tree from basically... Well, I flew from the ground from way over there. And I got to the tree and I was able to ascend it. And I actually claimed the tree from the top of the tree. So that's my worry. Is that this is going to sort of really change how we approach... Ooh, we're cold. It's going to change how we approach the game here. And I think I'm going to go ahead and we're going to eat one of you. We should now be pretty warm. There we go. But yeah, I mean, we don't have to worry about the hornets and the stag beetles. Ugh. And the other critters down below. We've got a hornet. 
Now, unlike the Argentavis, the Hornet isn't, like, super durable. It's decently durable. It's probably the, one of the toughest things in the game as far as hit points go. But it's not that durable. I mean, we're not leveling it up. We're not increasing its hit points. It doesn't get a... Uh, what's it called? A, a bonding, bondy thing. What was that word they used in Ark? Imprint. There we go. You don't, get, you don't get any imprint bonus or anything, so... Oops. Can we go this far? There we go. So, it's not any tougher than a regular Hornet. And I kind of like that. I kind of don't... On the one hand, it would be too easy if it, if it didn't, or if it was, you know, super tough. Let's stop here. Take a look at where we're at as far as our dude. Okay, so we just want to go... Basically down here, I think. Oh, this boat! He has a boat. Duh. That's an interesting... Interesting seeming path. But yeah, so that's sort of my thoughts on the Hornet as a companion. Uh, okay, get your own stay. Hello, hello, merchant with the wood mask and red eyes. Hello there! Who are you? I am a traveling merchant. I cover the vast oceans in my boat and more wherever I think there might be something interesting to collect or someone to trade with. Can I see what you have to sell? Oh, nice. Okay, so I was worried it was a one-to-one. -one, and that's why I brought 500,000 pyrite. But no, so for each 20 pyrite, we will get 10 of these hoots. And that means these are actually pretty darn cheap. So you know what? Boop! Boop! And I'll buy some metal parts. Yeah, and some vines and some flowers. Oops. Did I just sell those to you? There we go. Oh, okay, never mind. Flower, flower, flower. Anything else? Nope, okay. Uh, oh. No. Nothing new there. So we get vines. Decorative vines, decorative vines. So four kinds of decorative vines from you. That's pretty cool. Five decorative vines. With the builder's hammer. This is either a very creaky ship, or there are woodpeckers somewhere. Or jackhammers. Metal parts. Aha! Metal foundations and doors. I like that door. That's cool. Foundations? Well, we can take a look. I'll probably never build with it, because metal's just so expensive. Got a whole bunch of stuff here. Ooh, I do like those railings, though. Those are nice. Hmm. Those look interesting. My goodness, so many things. Alright, well... Come on, one more or are we done here? Please be done. Ooh, okay, I do like the roofs. It's a nice color. It's like sort of coppery. I like your boat, though. <laughs> He's got a chair. <laughs> a little thrown on his boat. Are we done yet? Oh my goodness, okay. Alright, so, back to you. The historian told me that he to sold you a tome to you, one containing some notes on the old tongue. Would you be willing to sell it to me? Ah, yes, I do have such a tome. I can't understand a word of it, but it sure sounds valuable. Roughly ten pi... Ten. Listen, buddy, do you know just how much pyrite I have on me? I'll buy 50 of these tomes, dude. Tome of the un... was it unspoken tongue? Unspoken old tongue. Alright, well... <laughs> okay. There's nothing... nothing actually useful for us. Okay. I'm gonna guess we don't want to have much of a use for these hoots. So, we'll hang on to these for now. I have a feeling that, you know, it's going to buy vines and flowers, and we'll consume them. Yum, yum, they have fork and knife on them, they're yummy. Okay. 
well. Uh, interesting. Sort of a path through here. Oops, forgot. Tank controls. Huh. Neat. Well, let's get our butt back up here, I think. And you know what? Let's go... Oops, we're stuck under the railing. That was my fault. Up, 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 up. Over the other hornet. Let's head back up in here. We will go talk to the historian. Before we do, let's go and see what those spiders have for us. If we can whack their little egg sacs with our shears and get some more of those abdomens, I might be more inclined to tinker around a bit with some of the other... Ooh, hello. Some of the other creatures that we can tame. So that way we can come back and tame another hornet and then afterward. Because I am... I am liking the hornet, but now I'm curious as to whether or not the developers gave attacks to the other creatures. Granted, if they didn't, then it's kind of, you know, a waste of time, but I guess we'll find out. And do not press the dismount button while you're over the water. That would be real bad. That would be real, real bad. Granted, we could survive it, but... Yeah, I guess it wouldn't be bad as long as we didn't hit the water. We could just call our hornet back to us. Okay, overall, this isn't bad. This is kind of like an Arjun Davis. Like I said, it, it does change the dynamic of the game when you have no credible threats in the air. And I kind of hope that the developers don't really add too much of one. I know there's now a bird that comes and eats you if you get too close to the edge of the map. And that's cool, but I wouldn't want to have, like, a bird that, like, if you fly too high, it just comes and kills you in your mount or anything. Or you stay there. I don't want you getting mixed up in this, um, ugly business. Oh, you know what? I should have gone and gotten the metal. You know, let's do this first. We'll get the spiders, and then... I'll run back to the base, get some metal, and get the stuff that we need for the armor from the Historian. The stuff, which is a little bit better than our current armor. And then we'll come back and... Oh. Ooh, you know what? No, we are not getting that armor. So the durability on our armor is 140 and 150. Look at the pirate armor. Durability is only 90. Which is weird. It has great protection, cold resistance, and durability. Like, no. Unless there's some mechanic of, like, how much damage coming in versus the armor affects how much damage your armor takes. I don't know. Maybe we'll make the armor. We'll try it out. And then if we hate it, then we'll get rid of it. That's another option, too, I guess. Hey, buddy. I know you know me. Boop. stuff. Yes, I have room for it. Okay. So let's get in here. Let's deal with the gray flies. Now, after we kill the gray flies, I am going to try to remember to repair our scythe. There we go. Let's deal with you. Okay, there's some of you. I spy another gray fly in there. Come on, buddy. There's probably a fair few of you guys. Ooh, right, there's four of you in that group, which is kind of unusual. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'll take the bug length and stuff, why not? I might want that later. How bad is our scythe? Our scythe is taking some damage, it's not too bad. Oops, wrong button. Let's get munching on the eggs. Because they're here.
I'm gonna ditch you. Everything else gets to stay for now. Alright, soup. Whoops. Did it again. I want you. That's why I keep right clicking. I'm gonna repair everything we have. And break you. And then back to these. But I kinda wanna put. Let's put you on seven so I can swap between you easily. Let's get in here and let's sort of try to surprise a couple of these, well, one exactly, of these spiders. Oh my goodness. It's driving me nuts. And... Oop, missed all of them somehow. He saw me. Okay. Come on, boys. It's Tango. Oh my, okay. So unless you're aiming right at them. Oh, come on. Heal up a little bit. Oh, more gray flies. Not a fan. Not a fan. Okay, let's see if we can get one of these whacked. Am I? Three, four, five. Silken eggs. Okay, so we don't get anything special out of you. That's a shame. That's a real shame. Ah, come on. Okay, so... That's rough. We got one. <laughs> oh man, that is a tough one. Or say this hurting. Let's let's get out of here. Come on. I mean, we'll we'll drag you with us. Yes. We're gonna go fix our stuff again. Okay. Well, that is annoying. I really wish that those cocoons had at least a couple more, like even one each of these cocoons or of these abdomens. But man, getting enough of these for getting a hornet. I mean, we do have enough for one more. We have one more at home. We have two here, and it takes three. So, I think we can go ahead and spend an episode later on and play around with the other teams and see whether or not... Really? Okay, that's, that's what I don't like, is that different things have different sort of damage levels where they start costing... And a lot of things go down to about halfway before they start costing anything, but this thing, I mean, you, you use it 30 times and you gotta repair it. I don't like that. Like, I like the sort of increasing repair costs, but I don't like the inconsistency. Okay, well, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna repair our scythe again. I might bring along a couple pieces of metal for obvious reasons. Well, also the pirate armor. And then we'll come back, we will... let's take our hornet inside and see how it does in there, and see if we can get relatively safely to the historian without too, too much trouble. So yeah, should be interesting. Alright, I'll see all of you in just a wee bit. Okay, we are back. Kind of like the reverse Bilbo Baggins, where he went there and back again. We went back, and now we're there again. So, there is that. Now, part of me... You know what? Part of me, in fact, enough of me, wants to go in from the top this time, and just see what this place is like. We haven't explored this yet, and maybe doing it on the back of a hornet is less exciting than going on the ground, but ugh, great flies. 
That's reason enough for me. <laughs> you know? No, we can't die. We're falling slowly. We're falling with style, right? That's what it is. Oh, no, we're not going to make it, are we? No. Can we get here? Ah, okay, we can rest here. That's better. With our butt hanging out of the wall. Okay, let's roll. Tank controls for the lose. Oh, man. Oh, wow, this was a church. Okay. That's what I thought it was, but just want to make sure. I was just curious. So our buddy... Basically smack dab in the middle there. Where all the hornets are. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. And I wonder if we're not on a hornet back, if it's even possible to get this high normally. Like doesn't seem to be much up here though. Get over to this uh Spanish moss here. Boop. Yeah, I mean I kinda like it. This is neat. Get our little way through here. I'm not sure they can follow. Oh my, this is uh, somewhat dangerous. How do we get down from here, though, is my question. Oh, I know how you get down from here. I'll bet I know how we're supposed to get down from here. The back. And I mostly know this because of the trailer for this showcased a stairwell in the back of this place. I do wonder if the other hornets will come bother us or not. I don't really want to find out because I don't want to lose our hornet, but yeah, we got a staircase here. It takes us right down to where I'm pretty sure I know where this comes out. Oh yeah. I know where we're going. Ooh. A storm? Oh, you're gotta be kidding me. Ugh. Alright, let's just get away from this hornet. Now, I do have... Oh, wait, we are sheltered in here. Okay, good. Well, well, well. Mr. Librarian, do I have news for you? Oops, wrong button. You are on stay. That's good. Oh, no. Ah, yeah. jeez. Oh, really? Alright, you jerks. You want to tango again? Yeah, that's right. Eat it. Get lost, flies. Do not kill my poor hornet. <laughs> I do not want to find all these guys again. Like fight, fighting, sure. Finding and dealing with and building the thing for not so much. All right, now if I get off of you, will you? Oh, could you eat the eggs? No, come back, dude. Come back. Where are you going? That was weird. Don't know why you went all the way down there, or did you, like, miss the eggs? Okay, well, you are on stay. Finally. We are sheltered here, so we're okay. Hey, Teodric. You know, you have, like evil flies. Hello, Vanguard. I am going to actually build the armor here real quick. Let's see. What can you make? Alright, so pyrite helmet. Pyrite pauldron. That is not a pauldron. Bambrace and leggings. Alright. Cool. 
So, I have retrieved your tome from the merchant, and it wasn't cheap. Yes, it was cheap. It was absolutely dirt cheap, man. Ten pyrite. Do you have any idea how much pyrite I have? Well done, Vanguard. Now let's have a look at this scroll. Hmm, yes. These seem to be the personal notes of Melkar the Apothecary. It speaks of an elixir powerful enough to cure almost any ailment. This part of the scroll chronicles Melkar's research into a key ingredient that can only be found in the Forbidden Lands. Uh-oh. A potent ingredient whose origin is tied to the giants themselves, the Forbidden Lands. The Forbidden Lands lie to the north, on the other side of the Great Chasm. The Queen has forbidden any attempt at traversing the chasm, believing that such a journey would anger the Sacred Owl. The ban might be unnecessary, however, as the giant winged creatures patrolling the chasm make it unlikely anyone would want to cross. Still, Melkar must have somehow found his way across the expanse in his search for this ingredient. Do you have any idea how Melkar might have made it across? It was thought impossible, we now have proof it's not. I'll need to investigate further. Give me some time to research the matter. And looks like we unfortunately cannot get there because it is still an early access. That's okay, though. Okay. Well, well, well. Farewell. Okay. Well, that's that's kind of a shame. Uh, I mean, not a shame. I mean, it's early access. What do you expect? But I wasn't expecting to sort of hit the end of the road so suddenly. Now, I do know... I do know that... We still have a big spider to fight here, but I don't see a reason to do it. I also know there is a there's a queen wasp right up about here, and it's sort of another boss thing. And I think you get a prize from it, but you can't do anything with that prize yet either. So I think we'll leave that for maybe a later exploration if we return to this game. So for now, let's head back to base. Let's take a look at the armor. Let's take a look at some of the metal things we can build and just sort of, you know, appreciate them and, and see what they look like. And then that's probably going to be it for small land for now. But yeah, I'll see all of you in a little bit when we are back at base. All right, everyone, we are back home safe. And let's take a look at this new armor. All this on. Well, that's kind of interesting. It's a very weird faceplate. <laughs> like, uh, how do we see? Oh, I see tiny slits there. I mean, I guess that's kind of realistic. I mean, there were some night armors that had very limited visibility. Uh, the rest of it, uh, eh, it's stylish. <laughs> Put it that way. But I like the look of it. I don't like the durability of 90. But again, unless there's something weird going on where, like, you know, maybe a hit from a hornet might deal three durability to our Iron Ring armor, but only one durability to this. I don't really know. And I don't really... Well, I mean, I could find out. And I do think that we're going to do is next episode will probably be the last episode of Small Land, since we have basically hit the end of the road as far as what the game has to offer. But we will sort of for science a bunch of the stuff that the game has, including things like how this armor durability works, as well as I want to go and tame maybe, you know what, let's do a grasshopper first. And then we'll do a couple more and see if we get the attacks from them. And if if not, we'll at least go and tame one of each of Spider, Gecko, and... There's one more, I swear. Spider, Gecko... Eh, I forget. And we'll at least see if they have... Well, we'll see how they work. If the Grasshopper has no attack, then I suspect the other ones won't. And I'm going to guess that the attack is restricted to just the Hornet for now. But we can at least find out and then play around with the other critters. So let's get some metal out here. Oh, and our hammer too. And what does it take to build things from metal? Oh, the catapult. Okay, we gotta try that too. <laughs> metal first. 
Ooh, oh, you take iron shards. Oops. Okay. Well, that's a problem. I mean, I guess that, that's not as bad as having to be built out of the ingots by a long shot. And each ingot is five shards and a piece of charcoal. So, yeah. Okay, well, that's... I guess we're going to put that off for next time, in that case. And, yeah, next time will be a, a for science episode. We will for science the new building materials we have. I'll go and get some metal in the meantime. And then for science the different mounts and see if they have attacks, and then just try out the ones that we haven't tried before. So yeah, that's the plan. I'm sticking to it. I'm also going to put back on our Iron Wing stuff because we can't fly in this thing. Alright everyone, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments, and I'd be curious to hear your overall impressions of the game and my coverage of it, especially as we get through to and through the last episode. So, yeah. Anyway, as always, my name has been Corazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.